Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Jenkins Online Meetup. Uh, today, we have a special session about uh, Hyperfest. And we have uh, two Meetup hosts. Uh, my name is Oleg Ninashev, and we also have Mark Wait on the call. Uh, so both of us uh, are long-term uh, Jenkins contributors. Uh, we spent a lot of time contributing to Jenkins core and uh, many plugins. Uh, Mark is uh, famous for being uh, the maintainer of Git plugin for the last 10 years or so. Uh, yeah, and thanks a lot to him for that. Uh, I currently maintain Jenkins core and both of us uh, um, act as Jenkins ambassadors. Uh, we work with Jenkins advocacy and outreach a special interest group, which presents Hacktoberfest to you this year. And yeah, uh, stay tuned uh, for the presentations. Um, so yes, today we talk solely about Hacktoberfest. This is our second session. We had uh, this session uh, this morning, uh, where we had pretty much the same agenda, though um, we will have some differences. Uh, we will have a quick introduction to Hacktoberfest, and we will talk about how to contribute to Jenkins, uh, which project uh, could you focus on, and then uh, maintainers of feature projects uh, will uh, briefly talk about what you uh, could do there. We have Uli Hafner and Cara Delamar on the call, so I guess we will have presentations about the Jenkins X and the warnings and Jplugin, plus me and Mark will probably do some extra presentations as well. If you have any questions, uh, yeah, we uh, just ask all speakers uh, to make some pauses and ask uh, whether uh, there are any questions uh, when you feel it's appropriate time. And if not, we will just ask you uh, once we finish your talk. Okay. Um, so I guess everybody is familiar with Hacktoberfest. So Hacktoberfest is a worldwide program. Uh, each year in October, everybody is welcome to contribute uh, to open source by submitting uh, pull requests. And uh, yeah, this is a sixth year of Hacktoberfest. Um, uh, this year it's sponsored by Digital Ocean and uh, Dev. Um, thanks a lot uh, for hosting uh, this event. Uh, again, it's a sixth year. And uh, last year was really big, so there were almost 50,000 contributors, uh, and uh, hopefully this year there will be approximately the same number. Hacktoberfest includes both online events uh, and local events. Um, so we have online events, you can just go to the Hacktoberfest digital ocean.com, uh, where there is a link where you can just sign up and start hacking. Uh, basically, that's it. Though many communities like Jenkins, we also organize additional online events and you can find uh, more webinars happening around. If you're interested in something local, there is also an events page and here you can find uh, a quite long list of meetups happening during uh, the Hacktoberfest. Uh, we have some Jenkins meetups there, so there are only a few of them uh, there right now, but uh, uh, we will have more meetups, and yeah, you are more than welcome to join one of these uh, meetups. Okay, so I will go back to my slide deck. Okay, uh, speaking of Jenkins, uh, Jenkins project has uh, implicitly participated in Hacktoberfest from very beginning because we were getting uh, a lot of contributions. Uh, but uh, since 2017, we run Hacktoberfest as official program. So it means that we prepare some uh, documentation, we prepare new friendly issues, we facilitate Hacktoberfest in our community. Um, and this year we do it again. So we welcome uh, every contributor who is interested in Jenkins uh, or every Jenkins user to start uh, contributing um, and uh, we are ready to that. Uh, we did some uh, homework before the event started. So if you navigate to Jenkins IO events uh, Hacktoberfest page, basically it's our pre-landing page uh, for all Hacktoberfest matters. So you can find all the information and what uh, we are presenting today is basically listed on this page. Um, what we have for you, uh, firstly, we prepared a lot of uh, issues uh, across multiple organizations uh, where you can find uh, something to contribute to. For example, if you go to this filter, you can find uh, issues um, in GitHub. So yeah, there is something like 60 issues uh, there and we are creating more. But yeah, Jenkins is mostly based in Jenkins Jira and here you can find much more issues just by navigating uh, to new different uh, issues. Uh, yeah, there is a filter for that. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, so you can find almost 200 issues there. And during the hard problem phase, we will make sure uh, to replenish this list. So if we start running out of issues, be sure we will create more ones. Uh, at the previous meetup, uh, Mark has presented a dashboard for new friendly uh, issues. So maybe Mark, you could do it now so that uh, we don't lose the context. You're muted. First things first, let me say something and then yeah, I'll bring it. So yeah, let me share mine and yeah. here it comes. Let's see, share. And here is this dashboard. You'll find the link to the dashboard in the in the friend in the slide deck. It's called Friendly Issues. On the left hand column, we find the component. So core, the warnings next generation plugin, web content, analysis model for warnings plugin, platform labeler, my favorite. Um, several remoting, one that Oleg's worked on for a long time, Marky Jackson's GitLab plugin work. And then across the, the mm -hmm. columns, the severity of the issue so that you can choose, hey, you want to work on something more severe? These are all newbie friendly, should all be ready for anyone to pick up and go to work on. Thanks, Oleg. Thank you. Thank you, too. Probably I'm the only one who is frightened about newbie friendly urgent issues. Yeah, I, I don't know how to, sometimes a critical issue being newbie friendly is a little surprising. I agree with you wholeheartedly and I, I am a little suspicious of those, mm -hmm. but it's good to have somebody look at it. All right, uh, so thank you. Uh, do you see my screen again? Yeah, uh, so in addition to newbie friendly issues, we also have a number of featured projects uh, uh, where you will get a uh, warm welcome uh, as a contributor, especially if you're a newcomer. Uh, so the idea of this project is that every project has um, uh, uh, contributors uh, who are able to provide quick reviews. Uh, they have explicit contributing guidelines. They have new different issues. So these projects uh, are something we would suggest to start from uh, if you are just uh, starting with Jenkins. And you can find that there is a pretty diverse list. So uh, there is website, there is a Jenkins portal, there are several plugins. Uh, also, there are tools like uh, Jenkins CLI tool, uh, there is Jenkins artwork and other things. So if you want to work on uh, code, uh, there are some projects for you. If you want to work on documentation or just improve design or draw something, we also have some featured projects. Uh, so uh, please feel free to choose something from this list and yeah, later today we will have an overview of some of these projects. Okay. Yeah, probably I shouldn't even switch to the presentation mode. Okay, uh, regarding uh, Jenkins meetups, uh, yeah, as I said, we have quite a number of meetups. Not all of them uh, have been already published on the Hacktoberfest site because it takes a while. Uh, you can uh, find this information just by going to Jenkins landing page. Uh, so Jenkins.io, if you scroll down, you can see that uh, there is a number of events. Um, so if you want uh, to see them more friendly way, uh, there is uh, this page, upcoming events. And uh, one part about this page is that it has been already improved during Hardtoberfest on the very first day, because before that, the layout was pretty bad. So here you can find the uh, incoming uh, meetups and events, and you uh, hopefully will have more. If you're meetup organizers, we also invite you to um, uh, schedule events uh, for that we have to event kit uh, available. So if somebody just wants to organize Jenkins Meetup, you can go to this page, Hotographer slash event kit. Uh, so we have some slide decks, including uh, the one we are presenting today with Mark. Uh, we have uh, a few extra slide decks. Uh, we have some sample agendas. We have references to meetups you wish you can copy. So basically organizing a Hotographer event is just a matter of your time uh, and we are ready to support you so if you have any questions we could do so and yeah obviously hiking something together on site is quite interesting and it's a very nice experience in Hacktoberfest so last year I participated maybe in six meetups in total Jenkins ones not Jenkins well once and it was really fun Speaking of fun, uh, it's not uh, only about recognition, but we also can uh, get some uh, cool schwag uh, this year. Uh, so, Hardtoberfest organizers sponsor stickers and t-shirts. 
So uh, a few tens of thousands uh, will uh, get uh, these prizes uh, if you submit in time. To get a T-shirt, you need to submit four pull requests, uh, which is quite uh, easier, and we encourage you to do so. Uh, from the Jenky side, we hope to have some stickers. We will uh, definitely uh, sort them at uh, on-site events. For online events, uh, we are organizing it, uh, uh, and budget the budget, we will have that. Also, thanks to CloudBees, uh, we have uh, good sponsorship for DevOps World Jenkins World Lisbon tickets. So we will have uh, discounts for all contributors and we will also have uh, free tickets uh, for top contributors. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, thanks a lot. Okay, uh, this, is, uh, this was my quick introduction. And the question is actually what you can uh, start doing now. And actually you can start hacking uh, right away. Uh, what you need to do is to go to Hotoberfest website, sign up. It's just uh, one form where you provide your GitHub account. Uh, that's it. Uh, then, uh, if you're interested in uh, Jenkins specifically, you can uh, join our Gitter channel. And after that, you can start uh, submitting pull requests. Uh, you can find all the information on the Hotoberfest page I've uh, referenced. And yeah, uh, basically, it's a quick start. One thing we ask, we ask you to do is to actually mark, uh, okay, I'll get to it. Uh, so one thing I wanted to mention is that actually any pull request counts. So size doesn't really matter. If you find a type up, please feel free to do that. Uh, if you uh, want uh, to contribute something to share your experience in a blog post or in proper solution pages, it's something we really appreciate. And, yeah, thanks everything, uh, since everything is uh, as code now. In Jenkins repositories, you can uh, find pretty much everything and every pull request uh, will uh, count towards October first goal. So even if you uh, improve YAML files or whatever, it's also a pull request which matters. Uh, what we ask you to do is to actually mark your pull request. Uh, one of the issues in the October first this year that uh, we as an organization have no opportunity to track contributors and again uh, to find uh, Schwab recipients and to find uh, uh, pull requests to highlight. We would really appreciate uh, um, uh, to have some uh, markers for us. Uh, the easiest way is to just uh, mark pull as pull request as October has the inner pull request, so something like presented here. And after that, some, uh, somebody of the October test team will update it and put the October test label. Uh, which we will use for internal methods. If you're maintainer of the repository or if you have right permissions, you can just put uh, the label right away and it's enough for us. Okay, uh, there are a few uh, useful links. Um, so I presented the uh, first uh, few ones. So there is also a FAQ if you just uh, have any questions. Uh, there is additional uh, landing page for all contributions uh, to the Jenkins site. It's Jenkins IO slash participate. So here you can find information about various kinds of contributions. Uh, for Hacktoberfest, we'd rather talk about this side of contributions because uh, they end up with this uh, pull request. And here you can find things. For example, if you want to write code, uh, you can go here and you can discover a pretty terrible page because it's still work in progress. But good news, again, we have a pull request for Hacktoberfest which improves this page. And uh, if uh, people review that, uh, we will have it uh, landed uh, maybe in 30 minutes or so. So, so yeah, uh, you can find all the information there and we will keep improving this page because yeah, basically I mean, if it is one of our projects for October first for myself and everybody else is also welcome to contribute. Uh, now, okay. Uh, so regarding other useful links, yeah, all uh, these links have a lot of different cross links. So basically it's like Wikipedia, you can navigate from one page to another uh, if you have a lot of time. If you have any uh, questions about Hotoberfest, uh, yeah, we have a Gitter channel, it's JCS slash Hotoberfest. Use this channel if you have any question or if you need any assistance or if you feel that your pull request stuck. Uh, and we have two GitHub organizations. One is uh, on Jenkins CI organization, another one on Jenkins Infra. So if you're a member of these organizations, feel, uh, feel free to just ping us if something is needed. Okay, uh, that's it from me. And basically you can start hacking. And if you still wonder what to hack and how to hack, uh, we have a next presentation for, from Mark Wade.
Okay. So, uh, are there any questions before we switch? Okay, then thanks all. And now, presentation by Mark. Thanks all. Thanks very much. Yeah, so I want to talk talk about how you can contribute and some give you some ideas of creative ways. So first, first crucial point, choose things that interest you. What is it that's interesting to you about the Jenkins project? We've got space for programming language work, for test harness work. If you're interested in hardware or documentation or software in one area or another, if you're passionate about written language or spoken language, we've got spaces for you. You'll succeed better if you choose something that you use. It matters more to you typically. So if you're using organization folders or if you're involved with the warning, if you use the warnings plugin, if you use a freestyle job or a pipeline job, if you're a Jenkins core user, those are all places that can use your help. Use something that you use, enhance something that you use. Where can you help? Code, documentation, tests, outreach, translations, even user questions. Any pull request counts. Just to reiterate what Oleg said, size does not matter on this case. It's just welcome to you. We love to have your contributions. So you want to code? Java is everywhere in the, in the infrastructure. It's in all sorts of interesting places that you can use Jenkins Core. Configuration is code plugin. We've got a whole bunch of featured projects that'll let you work Java. Um, we have an invitation and a whole bunch of good issues that you can use to work on Jenkins Core in Java. If you say, oh, I'm not a Java developer. Okay, plugins are Java as well with their additions. Then you could say, nope, let's do JavaScript. Okay, we've got several really important plugins that have a significant component of JavaScript. In addition, the website for managing plugins is JavaScript. We'd love to have contributions and help in any of those areas if you're a JavaScript developer. If you're interested in Golang, we've got an entire project, Jenkins X, which is based in Golang. Also, we've got a Jenkins command line interface implementation now that is Go-based from, from Rick, one of our colleagues in, in China. So if you're interested in Go as a language, here's your chance to contribute. We've got other languages involved in the infrastructure, plenty of places and things where you can help and Hacktoberfest can help you get started. Maybe you want to write. You say, I'm not interested in coding, I want to write instead. Well, all of our documentation is checked in. You can also do blog posts by submitting a pull request. User documentation, developer documentation, translations into native language, all available. You can submit to all of them as code. For user documentation, we have all sorts of different places here tutorials that are specific to particular platforms like Android or Docker-based. We've got the user handbook. We've got all sorts of things that you can help just by getting started there. If you've got more interested in development, the developer documentation needs even more work than the user documentation. There are so many places that could be benefited by your help. How do you deal with tutorials? How do you get started? all ready to go here. If you're a native language speaker, any plugin or Jenkins core typically has internationalization support in it, and you could internationalize that piece of that. There's also on the Chinese side, a Chinese localization SIG that is doing a massive effort to localize Jenkins into Chinese. Maybe you're a tester. I'm personally biased towards test, and there are lots of things that we could use in Jenkins testing. You could submit automated tests to help. You could assist with interactive testing. Every three months, we release a long-term support release, and that long-term support release needs testing for about the two weeks prior. Unit testing, integration testing, acceptance testing, all ready if you're interested in test. Likewise for plugins, Plugin authors love to receive submissions of automated tests. It's a great way to endear yourself to a plugin maintainer. 
hey, here's a test, and it's just a test to check that stuff's working still. Maybe you're a graphic artist. We need art and design. You'll see here on the right that the, some examples of Jenkins area meetup artwork that the meetups have loved having as a way to highlight their unique differences, their unique contributions. On the right, we've got an, an image from the Belgian Jenkins area meetup, another one from Austin, one from Spain, all part of creating artwork. We'd love to have your help and we're delighted to have you help us during the month of October and beyond. Oleg, that covered the piece that I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions to Mark? Well, looks like not. So maybe we could start uh, from um, doing some uh, features projects overviews. Uh, so yeah, I could try doing uh, Jenkins website overview again. So <laughs> yeah, on the morning we were doing uh, this uh, overview, but uh, unfortunately it didn't work well because probably there was too much traffic from photographers participants, so the site wasn't really loading well. But now it should be fine. Okay. Do you see my screen? We do. Okay, so let's go to Jenkins IO events October first. So yeah, we just do quick introductions of uh, these featured projects, and uh, one of the uh, top is website. So basically, it's our landing page for everything. It includes uh, uh, information, it includes blog posts, it includes the user and developer documentation, and yeah, we invite everybody to contribute to this site. Uh, so if you want to create your own blog post, uh, it's something uh, which you can do easily and uh, same for events. Uh, um, in order to contribute, we have a, a special page. It's uh, Jenkins.io slash yeah, this, yeah, this one, contributing guidelines. Uh, so in these guidelines, we basically have uh, recommendations for common cases. And you can start from this page if you want to contribute something big. If you want to contribute something small, it's uh, even easier. So for example, we can take uh, whatever on the page. Okay, let's take Google Summer of Code. So here we have a special interest group page. And you, uh, if you want to improve something, if you see a typo, or if you uh, just want um, to add some more context, uh, in the bottom of every Jenkins website page, there is improve this page button. You can click on that and then you get to GitHub automatically. You just need uh, to have a GitHub account. And here you can uh, basically edit this page. You can preview this uh, page using the GitHub features and you can submit a pull request using GitHub features. So you don't really need to clone the repository or to check out something locally if you want uh, to do small changes. For bigger changes, uh, there are guidelines here uh, that basically all our build flow is deputized. So just by running a simple make, uh, you can get everything running. It's a bit more complicated for Windows users, but uh, if you need any help with it, just let me know. I have a guideline for that somewhere. Okay, mm. uh, so regarding the website, uh, it's not only front end, it's not only ASCII doc, we also have engine under the hood. This engine is uh, basically based on Everstruct. So this is uh, mm, a combination of Ruby and Haml. So if you are Ruby fan, if you want to create something uh, complex, because many our pages are automatically generated with some standard logic, uh, and uh, we heavily use uh, various metadata in order to generate pages, you can contribute uh, to this logic. For example, uh, for blog posts, uh, so yeah, we can just open this blog post, you can see that uh, there are some metadata for authors, etc. And if you see how you could improve that, for example, uh, doing something to automate Twitter uh, content uh, or just things like that, feel free to do that. Okay. Any questions about the website? So just to provide some tips about the documentation. So if you go here, there are some things like pipeline documentation and other bits which are known to be painful for many users. So if you have any ideas how to improve this documentation, it will be really, really appreciated. Okay. Now, 
on the on the Jenkins website, we actually have feedback, and the feedback gets captured to a uh, spreadsheet that is can be re referenced. Notice Oleg at the bottom there that is was this page helpful? When oh, you click okay. that, it opens up a dialog box which you could check yes or no, and then give your feedback. Please, no foul words, no harsh comments. Yes, I know that the Git plugins page is the most hated page of any of the pages in this set. I, we're working on it. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of improvement of opportunities, as you may see. Okay. So, if there is no questions about Jenkins IO, we could proceed uh, with something else. Uh, for example, we could take a look at Jenkins X. Great. Shall I share my page then? Yeah, it would be uh, the best. Yeah. Don't you? So Jenkins X is um, an open source opinionated way to do CI CD on Kubernetes. So it, it imagines CI CD and it provides a way to do CI CD in a very cloud native way. It's written, as Oleg said before, it's written mostly in Go. In fact, like 98% of it is written in Go. So it's a good project if you want to practice your Golang. Um, we have this little blog post on our, can you see my screen? Can you see the blog post? Yes, we can. <laughs> um, we have this blog post outlining just the basics of how to engage what we're looking for and how to join our community. So you'll, you'll inevitably run into questions and we have, um, Slack channels, which are part of the Kubernetes Slack. So you join the Kubernetes Slack and then join us on Jenkins X dev or Jenkins X user. Um, and then those are very active channels. Any questions you have will get responded to right away. We also have office hours where you can ask questions. And actually our office hours for this week start in one half an hour. <laughs> so if you just wanna go from meeting to meeting, you're welcome to. Um, and there's a link for the Zoom forward on this page as well. But um, our main documentation site is Jenkins XIO, and that will show you uh, under the blog the page I just uh, was showing, but also it gives you documentation on how to start engaging with the project. So if we go to here and we go to contribute to the project, you can contribute either to the code or contribute to the documentation. And when you click here, you'll see in, I can't see it anymore, but uh, here we go. You'll see the edit this page button. And similar to the Jenkins website, this will bring you directly into a GitHub page and you can edit it directly here um, if you have a GitHub account. But um, in addition, we have information on how getting started if you want to fork and clone the project, run it and build it locally and then make a PR. So that would be very good for contributing to the documentation if you wanna do more fixes than are just on one page. We also have uh, documentation around contributing to the code. So that'll get you set up on um, sort of engaging with the, the source code of Jenkins X. And for the source code of Jenkins X, our Jenkins X slash JX is the repo for that. And we have a number of issues that we've already tagged Hacktoberfest or good first issue, often both at the same time. And that's a good way to kind of get started and start engaging with that code base. But do feel free to ask any questions you have as you begin to poke at the code base and look into the various issues on our Slack channels. Thank you, Cora. Yeah, any does questions? anyone, that was very fast run through. Does anyone have any questions for me? Actually, I saw a pull request coming from me for a spelling error. So that's great. Thanks, Cara. <laughs> well done. Thanks, Mark. Um, yes, actually, our um the doc site is is new we've revamped it so there will be things like spelling errors which probably were there before but in addition to that because the architecture of the site is different a number of our links are are the old links and therefore are broken so this is like a really like nice little fast easter egg hunt kind of way to get some prs in um yeah you're, you're welcome to fix those and that makes uh, it's a valuable contribution and we appreciate it and it will definitely get you your four PRs for Hacktoberfest quite quickly. Yeah. We have uh, recently added a uh, link validation to Jenkins IO pull request builder. So if somebody wants to implement, implement the same for Jenkins IO, please feel free to take a look at the code and maybe copy that. 
no. Yeah, in our case, it's a Jenkins file, and likely we'll uh, need to migrate to Jenkins X pipelines. So, yeah, probably it's a good case study. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, any other questions? <laughs> so yeah, thanks a lot for the presentation, Kara. My pleasure. Thank you for letting me speak. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so who does want to go next? I think we should. I think we should invite Uli next. I want to hear more about warnings NG. Yeah, okay, <laughs> then I will step in again. <laughs> and I hope I don't forget anything if you have the same talk twice. <laughs> so um, I will share my screen as well. Yeah. Uh, and Kara, I think you may have to surrender the share. Uh, yes. So you may have to click the stop share. Yeah, I was uh, looking for the button right now. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, I still can't share mine. Okay, now um, we can. I found the button. Okay, I have it now. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, the warnings plugin is yeah one of one thousand Jenkins plugins. So I uh, present a little bit about the plugin, but not very much. So if you have questions, we can focus on them later on, maybe. So the plugin basically shows warnings and you yeah, from static analysis tools or from your compiler in several screens. And so these screens can improve with pull requests for the hackathon. And so for instance, uh, we have uh, charts which are shown, which show the number of warnings over a lot of builds, for ex example, or what be most important So uh, you can also uh, see the details of these warnings. Um, for instance, you see here we have two warnings for Java, two 12 for Maven, and so on. So one thing you can help in my plugin is to add some new parsers, for instance, or to improve existing parsers. So there is a lot of work to done to do on the model side, if you are familiar with Java and so on. What is also very helpful if we have some people helping with the user interface. Oops, sorry, I need to go to a different one. Um, when you would like, uh, when you want to, to jump into the details, for instance, uh, for instance, we can jump to the PMD warnings. Um, there are a lot of warnings and you can help to improve the tables which are here. So here we have a lot of feature requests from people, small changes. Uh, they are either on the UI side where we have some JavaScript or CSS. So one thing what would be helpful if you even you can't program JavaScript or you can't program in Java, uh, it would be helpful if we have someone with uh, CSS uh, know-how who can provide different views for different resolutions. For instance, if I uh, reduce the screen resolution of the screen, the layout will change and we can provide different views for different resolutions, for instance. Maybe you can even watch it on the handy if you like. So this is one of the things you can help. Um, if you need more documentation about the plugin, there is a, in GitHub is the... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is from me? No. Okay, uh, in, in GitHub you have um, the documentation, then you can jump in to see what's going on and what you want to help, or you just go to the GitHub channel of the ones plugin, then I can help you with some of these issues. Uh, Mark already showed the issues uh, of the Jenkins project. So in my plugin, there are several different issues available. You can simply write unit tests, you can provide bug fixes, feature requests, or localization, for instance. Uh, currently, everything is just in English, but it would be helpful to have the uh, UI localized to different languages as well. Well, yeah, I think that's all I can say. So Let's switch back to 
One question, uh, do you have any uh, static analysis tools uh, which uh, need integration uh, and uh, where there is high demand to get them integrated? Uh, you're muted. Sorry, again, muted. Uh, yeah, sorry, which one? <laughs> Uh, so for Warning SNG plugin, uh, are there any uh, static analysis tool uh, integrations which are missing now and which would benefit from contributors? Uh, I'm not sure if I now follow. What what is your question? Sorry. So sorry, Uli. I think he was wondering if there are new static analysis are there additional static analysis tools that sh that you would like to integrate that are not yet integrated. What I'd seen in Warning SNG was. Every tool I'd ever considered seemed to be integrated, but I think it's a good question from Oleg. Are there tools that you're missing? Are you, oh, I'd love to have this tool integrated and it's not. Um, actually, uh, I, I don't have such tools uh, because I'm just programming Java and for Java, everything is supported, but several people come on, come and pull an issue and said, yeah, maybe this tool would be nice to be supported. But this is something which is typically provided by the people who use these tools by themselves. So they typically need a, just a small class uh, to add an additional tool, and then it works out of the box in my plugin. So it's really easy to support a new tool. Um, it's just some additional work to do. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions to Ule? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a few topics in the list. Um, so I think we could talk about Jenkins configuration as code plugin, and uh, then we could talk about uh, um, plugin documentation. What do you think, Juan? Yeah, I like that. So you'll talk configuration as code? Mm, yeah, why not? We didn't talk about it on the morning. That'd be great. Okay, uh, do you see my screen? So yeah, uh, Jenkins configuration as code plugin is one of the trending uh, plugins in the Jenkins ecosystem. Um, yeah, now it has something like more than 1,000 stars. Uh, and uh, this plugin was just released uh, one year ago. And uh, we obviously have hundreds of contributors. We have a lot of pull requests coming every day, including uh, a lot of pull requests related to Hacktoberfest. Uh, basically, the idea with this plugin is that you can kind of configure your Jenkins instance as code. Uh, so, like you can use Jenkins pipeline to configure your jobs as code. You can use uh, configuration as code plugin to configure your system itself using YAML files. And it was a uh, much anticipated feature from Jenkins community members because before that you had Groovy hooks, you had different configuration management tools uh, like Ansible or whatever but there was no engine within Jenkins itself. So this plugin basically represents this engine and we recommend uh, users to try it out. There is a lot of activities uh, going uh, on with this plugin. Uh, so you can find uh, many issues uh, right inside uh, the repository or you can find uh, a lot of integration issues um, available uh, within um, mm, within uh, Jenkins Jira. So for example, here is a link uh, to the plugin compatibility dashboard uh, where you can uh, see uh, many plugins which still need some improvements uh, in terms of JCAS compatibility. So JCAS provides a lot of things out of the box, but still some plugins need some love. And uh, yeah, if you are a uh, configuration as code user, probably you will discover some plugins uh, which uh, would benefit uh, from updates. So it's one of uh, potential opportunities uh, to uh, contribute. And another opportunity is to actually focus on the plugin itself. There is still a lot of features which could be added, for example, diagnosability or just plugin demos. So for example, um, here you can find that there is demos folder, which it includes a lot of plugins, but definitely not 1600 that we have in Jenkins. So it's a nice opportunity to contribute something. 
And you can follow the example of Victor Martinez, uh, who is one of uh, Jenkins contributors, and you can see that there is a lot of pull requests, which basically move integration tests to demos, and you can create new demos for new plugins, and it's a great opportunity. Uh, for example, you can just install the plugin on your instance, export the configuration, then just export, extract some um, configurations. Uh, if everything works well, then you have a demo. If uh, something doesn't work well, you can report the compatibility issue and try to fix that. So it's a kind of end-to-end -end project where you can have a lot of opportunities uh, to contribute. So I see the, ray, the hand raised uh, by Pretty. Uh, so if you have a question, please ask. Probably it was just a misplaced button. Uh, okay, another side of this plugin is documentation. Uh, so we are working uh, in order to improve the documentation and all documentation is already located in uh, GitHub, uh, but there are still some uh, gaps uh, which could be addressed. For example, there is still no documentation for uh, REST APIs in the plugin. And if somebody is interested to contribute, it could be much appreciated. If you're interested to create, uh, for example, Schwager specification, it's something you could do as well. Uh, just uh, by uh, yeah, for example, there is a ticket for JCAS REST APIs, so you can just submit uh, the uh, pull request to the repository itself, and then it will be integrated. And after that, this documentation will be a part of Jenkins official documentation because right now we republish it uh, on the plugin website, for example. So there is a plugin site which basically publishes uh, documentation uh, to GitHub uh, from GitHub now. And I guess that uh, Mark was going to quickly describe this project. Okay, any questions? Okay, then I'll probably uh, just stop presenting, though I can uh, also show another hint about documentation while I'm here. So there are some plugins uh, which basically extend configuration as code, like opportunity to run a GUI uh, code right from a configuration as code plugin, uh, opportunity to integrate this secret SSM plugin for credentials. And if you go to these pages, uh, then yeah. So this thing actually opens uh, this page and uh, there is a reason for that because if you just go to plugins, change to say your, then uh, what you will see that uh, there is actually an empty page here. So uh, for documentation and system, there are all uh, such bits which could be improved and it's a relatively big thing. Um, and Mark will be talking about how to get documentation published on this page. Okay, if there is no questions, I'll just stop sharing so that somebody can take it over. All right, so okay if I go from there, Oleg? Uh, yes. So oh, it looks like I've seen uh, Jean Paulo on the background. Oh, is, is, sorry, did I miss something there? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jean Paulo. Yeah, um, uh, Jean Paul is one of Jenkins contributors uh, who is a maintainer of Easy Jenkins, uh, which is uh, a standalone repository. But he was an active contributor in uh, Java 11 projects and also in JCAS compatibility. Right. Thank you, Jean Paul. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. So, the Oleg had showed the plugin site. So, as an example, if I search for badge, the badge plugin on plugins.jenkins.io, here it is, and here's its documentation. And it's pretty weak, considering that there's an awful lot of actual documentation already available for this plugin and many other plugins in their own repository. Sometimes that documentation may be on the wiki site. In this particular example, it's not, but there could be. What, we, what we've got is a project suggestion as a good Hacktoberfest topic to convert from using the wiki as the source of documentation that you see here to instead using the GitHub README. So if we look at the badge plugin, you'll see that the GitHub README has actually got a lot of good information in it about how to use this thing, how you deal with it. And so the pull request 
to create that transition from hosting documentation in Wiki to hosting it in GitHub is a pretty simple change. I open up the palm XML file, find this URL tag, and change it. So I've first got to fork this repository. So I'm going to fork the repository. Takes just a few seconds, and it will be back that I can then make the change that I want to make. So I'm going to go back right to that palm file and edit that POM file. And instead of HTTP pointing to the wiki page, I'm going to change that to instead point to this repository like that. And I have to take off that portion. Now, when I save this, it's going to make a commit for me. So use the wiki as, or no, use GitHub for documentation. And now Oleg reminded me the last time we did this, I need to mention Hacktoberfest, right? Because it will help people see that, oh, hey, the Hacktoberfest teams are suggesting this. So Hacktoberfest contribution, I'm going to propose that file change. Now it's going to put me right into the user interface to create a pull request. So I'm going to create a pull request. And here again, say Hacktoberfest so that everyone can tell that I'm doing this. And it was that easy. So I didn't have a local clone. Yes, I can locally clone. I can do all those things. I could have built the plugin myself. Don't have to. This will help the project and take advantage of already existing documentation, lets people see the better documentation that is already available inside the README. Any questions on contributing by converting from wiki-based documentation to GitHub-based documentation? No, great. Then Oleg. Yeah, sorry, I was uh, looking for the plugin to label that uh, properly according to the policies. Yeah, one thing about the migration from um, uh, documentation. So it's not only about uh, putting some metadata. You're also welcome to actually migrate uh, the documentation itself. Because if you use a Jenkins wiki, you may have noticed that sometimes it's unstable, sometimes documentation is uh, documentation just obsolete. And by moving it to GitHub, uh, you can uh, achieve a lot. First, the documentation is called so that uh, new features, etc., can be recommended out of the box. It's more convenient for maintainers, it's more convenient for users. And it's a great opportunity to actually improve the documentation. So if you're a heavy user of whatever plugin and you don't like its documentation, Maybe it's a good opportunity to actually put everything to GitHub, uh, rewrite the documentation, and then um, uh, get it uh, published on the plugin side. And uh, yeah, even that is just a part of a bigger effort. So uh, if uh, you work on the documentation, it's much appreciated, but uh, you can go further because uh, there is an effort to actually uh, have better integration with this uh, plugin side. So it's not only about uh, documentation. We have recently introduced uh, um, automation for change logs in Jenkins. So you may have seen that uh, there are many plugins. For example, you can take uh, Mark's uh, Git plugin. And uh, yeah, many plugins have already been integrated to GitHub releases with some change log automation. Same, same for warning synergy, same for configuration as code. And uh, our intention is to actually make this documentation available uh, to users um, in public on the plugin side, so that when you navigate uh, to plugins, Jenkins IO or Git, so here again you can see documentation uh, pulled from GitHub. But we also want change logs to be displayed there. We want to simplify uh, analytics for Jenkins users, so that when you update, you can see differences between uh, plugin versions and change logs. So it's a part of bigger effort uh, to improve uh, user experience for um, all uh, Jenkins users. 
and uh, you can contribute to this effort by just uh, joining this epic website 637 so here you can find a lot of additional stories for example support uh, jtask logos on the plugins sorry not jtask logos just supporting uh, plugin logos on the site uh, or uh, pulling information from update centers like maintainers uh, from another source because maintainer lists are also quite obsolete in some plugins and yeah, if you're more interested to contribute to such tooling, uh, this is an epic for you. Um, I haven't put it as a featured project yet because I don't have so many user friendly tickets. But if someone is interested, I'm happy to pay it once. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. Um, any questions about uh, documentation? and uh, specifically plugin documentation. I guess not. So we have uh, 20 minutes left. Uh, so somebody tried to turn it okay, So let's take a look what we have uh, in our featured projects. October first. So yeah, we talked. Oh, we didn't talk about Jenkins core. Yeah, what? a small thing we forgot about. Okay. So yeah, Jenkins core. Uh, yep. Um, Jenkins core is just a part of uh, any Jenkins installation. So it provides engine uh, where uh, which basically runs Jenkins. It includes web container. It includes all extension points. Can consume web plugins. And also some critical features. All of it is a part of Jenkins core. Uh, if you want uh, to uh, contribute, it might be a good opportunity because uh, Jenkins core itself, uh, it has a lot of activities pending now. So if you go to GitHub, you can see that uh, there is a number of pull requests about cleaning up the code. So we uh, try to finally enable spot bugs on a higher severity levels. Uh, we want uh, to um, just uh, renew the code base so you can see that uh, there is a lot of refactorings and uh, this is actually a great opportunity to submit small pull requests. Uh, also, if you want uh, to find uh, more newbie friendly tickets, you can just go to newbie friendly issues. There is quite a number of them uh, for the Jenkins score. Um, and yeah, you basically can take anything. There is a lot of minor bugs which uh, are waiting for fixes. Apparently, there are two high severity issues which are newbie friendly and still waiting for the bug fixes, as Mark presented earlier today. Uh, but yeah, basically, you can just take something and uh, try contributing. And we have contributing guidelines available for Jenkins Core uh, developers as well. So Jenkins Core is basically a multi-model Maven project. So if you're familiar with Maven, you can uh, quickly build it. You can uh, get uh, tested and yeah there is all documentation which describes how to get it running and how to contribute patches there so yeah if you're interested please feel free to do so and it will be much appreciated because yeah right now we increase velocity of uh, Jenkins code changes so uh, any contribution will be much appreciated and since I'm there there is also a lot of changes uh, going on with this packaging. So, for example, there is ongoing work to offer official packaging uh, for Windows, um, I mean, Docker packaging. Uh, so, yeah, you can find a lot of pull requests here in a Docker repository or in agent repositories like this Docker JLP slave. I believe that many users actually run with them. And if you're interested, there, is also there are also opportunities to do something. There are already some pull requests marked as October 1st. So feel free to submit more fixes. Uh, and yeah, pretty much every other repository in Jenkins, yeah, you can go there, you can propose something. It will be much appreciated. Okay. So. Oh, I Oleg, could I, could, could I yep. talk briefly about Platform Labeler, my favorite yeah, little uh, plugin? Uh, uh, do we have time? Yeah, uh, please uh, do so. Officially, it's, uh, we still have something like 15 minutes. I see that some people uh, started dropping off, but still, uh, 
if somebody's interested, let's have a quick over here. Great. So, so here's the here's there's this little plugin that I maintain called the Platform Labeler, and it automatically applies labels to platforms. So, in particular, to Linux platforms. The challenge for me is a number of these Linux platforms I don't have. And some of them, for instance, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and SUSE Linux Enterprise Server are licensed operating systems. So I would have to purchase them in order to support them fully. If your, your company already has a license for Red Hat Enterprise Linux or for SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, you could contribute a pull request for these that just borrows briefly time enough to compile and capture some data from the particular files that are described inside these bug reports. So it's an easy pull request to submit, and it's a pull request that I won't be able to submit because I don't have access to those systems. So it's a good opportunity for somebody from the Hacktoberfest community who has access to one of those to help out. Thank you for the introduction. Any questions? Okay, then I think uh, that's it for today. So again, thanks to everybody who participated in the meetup or, or who watches it online. We will get uh, this recording posted soon and uh, it will become a part of our documentation. Um, if you want to find more information, uh, again, uh, there are some links uh, which uh, should be available. So for example, yeah, the Jenkins events have October 1st, uh, participate, uh, you can find a lot of information there. And if you miss something, just uh, pin us in the Gitter uh, channel so that uh, we will be able to help you and uh, hopefully we can improve our documentation in parallel. So any feedback uh, will be appreciated if you see that something is horrible, that something doesn't work at all, please don't hesitate to let us uh, know about that. We will be happy to fix that or at least to create follow-up tickets uh, for that. So again, thanks a lot uh, for your time and have fun. Have a great hiking time. Um, and yeah, have a great hike over first. Thanks, Oleg. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'll stop the recording if I find the button finally.